Now, why is this? If a woman was born with certain genes that have a propensity to cancer of the breast, why do some women get it, but others don't? That's the topic for today. So there are many different genetic issues that can make someone at risk for getting breast cancer. But the ones I'm going to talk about today create the most significant increased risk for cancer. And they're called BRCA1 and BRCA2. And so if you have this uh, mutation of this gene, BRCA1, your risk goes up of getting breast cancer by like 72% by the age of 80. And if you have BRCA2, the risk goes up by 44%. And so that's pretty high. And uh, what's really bizarre about this is if you research this on Google, there's really no solutions other than monitoring and waiting and then doing early detection and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, they don't really tell you what to do. Um, one thing you need to know is this. Your genes don't cause cancer. It's the epigenetics. That is all the lifestyle things that are above your genes that actually control whether these genes get turned on or turned off. And when we're talking about this BRCA gene, we're talking about a repair gene for your DNA. It's slow. So what's happening? You are not able to repair your DNA damage as well as other people. So this only relates if you develop damage to your DNA. If you don't create damage to your DNA, you don't have to worry about it. So I think it's really important to understand what creates damage to the DNA, and then what are the epigenetic actions that you can do to take you out of that risk category. And just as a side note, there are other genes, uh, for example, the detoxification genes that uh, can increase your risk from another angle. So for example, if you have a problem with those genes and you're exposed to certain chemicals or toxins, your body is going to retain and hold those and accumulate those more. And that could be the reason why those um, pre-carcinogenic um, toxins can then turn into a carcinogen. Let's talk about what are the lifestyle things that can make things worse. Well, what creates DNA damage? We have smoking, alcohol, junk foods, toxins in the environment, pollution in the environment, plastics, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, all those, heavy metals, nitrates, in certain processed foods, birth control pills, estrogen replacement therapy. So as long as you can avoid all that, you're perfectly fine. All right, so now let's talk about the flip side. Let's say, for example, you avoid all these things. What else can you do to really take this risk uh, factor and just bring it all the way down to zero? Well, thank goodness, there are things that you can eat that can greatly help. Um, probably the best thing you should start eating is cruciferous vegetables. That would be like the kale, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, the cabbage, the bok choy, the radish, arugula. So all these uh, cruciferous vegetables have certain phytonutrients and phytoestrogens that can turn some of the estrogens in the environment to weaker estrogens. These phytonutrients can also directly speed up that gene that you have a problem with. And the other cool thing that there's this chemical in cruciferous vegetables that inhibits this enzyme called aromatase. Aromatase is the enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen. And so if you can inhibit that, you can lessen the amount of estrogen you have and lessen your risk because estrogen is a big uh, factor in breast cancer. So it just so happens that these chemicals, and cruciferous, are aromatase inhibitors. And I also have done another video on uh, a lot of other things that inhibit this uh, enzyme too, like iodine and sea kelp, for example. But there are a lot of plants that you can eat that will do that. So I know this might be surprising, but some people will even tell me, well, ugh, I don't like vegetables and I definitely don't like sprouts. What else can I do? Well, they can eat a concentrated form of cruciferous vegetables, and that would be microgreens. For example, like broccoli sprouts has like at least 50 times the amount of sulforaphane as adult broccoli. And so what that means is that you can get away with consuming much less of these sprouts than these large salads or a large amount of cruciferous vegetables. So that's something else you can do, which comes from cruciferous vegetables. You can start consuming dim. So dim is a concentrated phytonutrient 
But there is one more thing that they can do, which is actually very, very powerful. And it also explains this wild variable where you have some people that can smoke, drink, eat terrible foods, and not really get cancer. Okay. And they seem to live to be 99 years old. What's going on with them? But you also have the mindset of the person. Some of these people are very, very positive. Uh, for example, my, um, my wife's uncle. This guy, no matter what happened to him or his environment, he maintained this super positive attitude. He was just amazing. I'm like, how can he do that? And he was never negative. He was always positive. And this guy had pretty much every disease and he just got through it. He survived it fine. And he lived a long life. But unfortunately, not everyone is up there on that emotional level. Your mindset is probably the most important thing over this whole thing. Whether you have genetic weaknesses or not, it's not all about your genes, right? Because your mind can be very, very powerful. I mean, there's even a, a great experiment which I'm going to do, which is pretty wild. And this has to do with plants. You can grow plants, right? Let's say you had the same seed, same soil, same environment, okay? And with one plant, you're giving a lot of positive encouragement, okay? You're actually talking to the plant. And I know you might think this is weird, but you should do this experiment. It does work. Just admire the plant. Give them lots of admiration. Man, your leaves are doing incredible. You're growing so well. Well done. And you just start talking to this plant in very, very encouraging ways, right? And then with the other plant, be very critical, full funding, and invalidate the crap out of that plant. Wow, is that all you have? Why, this is pretty pathetic leaves. When are you going to start growing? Man, this is, well, you don't look too good. Now, if you did that for like two weeks, you would see a huge drastic change in the growth of that plant. And then if you just carry that over to humans, right? And I'm not even talking about other people criticizing you or encouraging you. I'm talking about what you say to yourself. Very, very important. So many people beat themselves up on a daily basis. And so their thoughts about themselves are pretty bad. And so we have to remember not to do that. All right, so there's other epigenetic things you can do. Exercise on a regular basis will very significantly decrease your risk. Doing fasting and prolonged fasting will also decrease your risk. Going low carb, doing organic, reducing your stress. These are the, some of the things that you should be reminded of. You probably already have seen this in another video I did. But in reality, you usually have to remind someone they don't really necessarily change their habits in just one suggestion. I had to actually hit bottom before I really started to change my diet. So you can get your genes tested to see if you have a problem with this specific gene or problems with the detoxifying gene, but, but you don't even need to really do that because you can start making these changes right now. Um, you really have no downside. It's going to help you, not just with decreasing your cancer risk, but for many other problems. Now, since we're on the topic of cancer, it'd be very, very good for you to watch this video on fasting, okay, and what fasting can do with decreasing your risk for cancer. And I put that video up right here.